Welcome in. Today I want to go over my tune in excruciating detail because I get people that ask all the time, you know, about ignition timing and all the stuff that I run on this. And it's a completely stock M30B34 from an E28 that made over 500 wheel horsepower. Uh, this is the same tune that I made 560 wheel horsepower and 445 pound feet of torque. So let's just go over everything and I'll explain what I have as we go. So just start with the, the settings from like everything you guys can see and just, and uh, if you have any questions, it'll hopefully be answered in here. So the engine is a 3400, so 3.4 liter. Injectors are 840 cc's, uh, the DECA, Siemens DECA 80 pound injectors. So what I run in this, uh, it has a Walboro 450 fuel pump. It's on speed density, six cylinder. Uh, this is on a micro squirt ECU, so a $300 micro squirt ECU. Um, let's go to general settings. Um, here's everything I've got. It's pretty standard. Just wanting to show you guys so you can pause the video and and uh, look at things if you need to. And let's go to the rev limiter. This I've messed with back and forth, um, but the rev limit is set at 6300 with a 200 um, soft limit. So at 6100 it starts to slow down the engine with fuel cut. I do fuel cut only. Um, the spark cut with these engines and rocker arms can damage the rocker arms. You can spit a rocker arm and uh, have some problems. So just to be as soft as I can on the valve train, um, I give a, a bigger hysteresis here. You could add you know, anything above like 150 would probably be good here. Um, and then I've messed with the coolant based uh, rev limit, but I've just found just a standard rev limit is good. With this, I made a video on it. You can kind of set up a safety so that your rev limit drops down if you're overheating, kind of goes into like a limp mode. Um, that's why this shape is the way it is. Um, but that is uh, something if, if you're concerned about it, you can set up. Um, but I stay on top of the maintenance and so I'm not too worried about it. Anyway, um, that's not super important. You can do spark cut limiting or both. Um, I've tried them over the years, but I think the safest for these old rocker arm engines is just fuel cut only. Um, so let's go back. And I think in here, the rest of it is just, it's all just standard. Everything is just default. Um, I don't think there's anything really in here other than that, that I have my tack output on. It's just the tack out goes to the uh, black wire under the um, glove box from the old ECU. Uh, let's jump in. Everyone wants to see this injector dead times. This is what I run uh, 1.3 milliseconds dead time on the Siemens Decas. Um, haven't ever had any issues with that. Um, let's see battery voltage correction. This is exactly what I run. Haven't seemed to have any problems. Been using those same settings on this car for like six years. Uh, oh yeah, flex fuel. I do have my flex fuel set up and running. Uh, those are my settings. The base ethanol content in the fuel near me is about 8%. Um, just feel free to pause the video if, you, if there's anything you wanna look at in more detail. Uh, let's see, overrun fuel cut. I set this up, this is nice. I don't know, it saves a little bit of fuel when you're just cruising around. Um, I give it a little bit longer of a delay. That way, if you just stay above your throttle position threshold, so if you have your foot, you know, slightly on the gas, you're not going to kick into this. But if you're really off the gas, you can uh, save a little bit of fuel coming off the highway or longer stuff where you're going downhill. Um, probably doesn't really matter in a racing engine, but uh, this is fun to mess with, so I keep it on. And uh, AFR target table. This one, I'm sure everyone's wondering about. Uh, the way that I keep the engine alive in this car is by drowning it in fuel, and it seems to be working really well for me. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of things that engines like and don't like, and they like fuel, and when they don't have enough fuel, especially under boost, they get damaged. So your best thing is giving it, basically, you, you give it enough fuel to where it starts to lose power or you, you know, till it's coughing and then back it off a little bit. 
Um, that way you'll always have a margin of, of safety. So basically anything above a couple pounds of boost, I'm at 11.5 and then in high boost, 11.0, 10.8, uh, somewhere in there when this thing's making like 600 to the crank. So um, you can do that uh, anywhere in here when I'm cruising. I just keep it at like around stoic. Uh, it Sometimes it doesn't like to do that with the batch fire. It, it'll want like a little bit more, but usually around idle with like batch fire, it wants to be like at a 13.5, just a little bit fatter. This isn't a sequential um, fueled vehicle, so um, it I don't have as much control over that, so it just likes to be a little bit more rich. Um, this isn't... Yeah, this isn't perfect, but it's a good base for you. Really, what you should care about if you're doing a boosted car is just giving it all the fuel it wants. I just put it at 11.8 or 11.5 uh, so you're nice and safe anywhere in boost. Um, you'll hardly notice a difference in how much fuel it uses, but your engine will last forever. So uh, that's just my words of advice on fuel settings. Um, my fuel table this doesn't really matter because every fuel table should look uh roughly like this your your values will will change but they'll always be from like zero to 255 on a mega squirt um that's the tables and this is just the shape of this is just determined by the volumetric efficiency of the engine where it likes to breathe uh, one little cool thing if you want to know is you can always find peak torque um, if you say you have your AFR target table set roughly in a, in a similar fashion and you go and you tune this thing and everywhere above boost is the same air fuel ratio, it will start to shape itself like the torque curve. So you'll always have the most fuel being used at peak torque because that's where uh, the peak cylinder head airflow is going to be. Um, so you'll see the numbers are actually higher down here where it's making peak torque than it is up top. Um, up top, it's actually using less fuel. So that's kind of cool. You'll just see like kind of a bubble where it's really, the engine is really happy and that's where it wants to flow. And this is on a stock cylinder head, stock cam. So if this was like a modified big cam, all this would be moved up a little bit. Um, but anyway, that's uh, usually I just keep the idle area all the same. Uh, just make sure that it, it's happy and it's not hunting for idle, but it's this whole area has uh, enough fuel to be happy. And then as soon as it gets out of idle, you know, I just blend it up in either direction. But setting this all to the same uh, in that rough area, it really kind of helps it stay stable. It doesn't hunt for idle as much. And I have other videos on idle control where you can look at that if you're interested. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Yeah, I don't have any anything really else here to show. Let's go over to ignition settings. Um, it's a toothed wheel. This is a Motronic 1.3 front trigger wheel with a DIY auto-tune hall effect sensor. Um, so ignition capture is on a falling edge. Spark output is going high. Those are kind of specific to micro squirt, mega squirt products. Number of coils is wasted spark. I have LS coils, six of them. And then the first spark output is um, ignition one. That's just, and then from there, it just goes sequentially like one, two, three. So on a six cylinder, it batch fires between one, two, and three in pairs. Um, and then trigger wheel arrangement, single wheel with a missing tooth. It's a 60 minus two. And this tooth angle before top dead center is 84. This varies. Uh, people have asked me quite a bit on this and depending on your car, it could be from like 82 to like 90 uh, ish, sometimes 87, 88. You just need to get a timing light out and check that. Um, someday I will get to doing a timing light video on how to do this. Um, it's just, if you haven't done it before um, on a mega squirt or a micro squirt, uh, it just takes uh, a couple different methods to get it right. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's those settings. Uh, these, the cranking dwell and the cranking advance, just set those there. I've messed around with these. I like having a little more advance on idle and cranking and just helps the engine uh, kick over a little bit faster when it's cold, especially. And the dwell, I have 
the D585 coil packs, the ones that if you overdwell them, they'll ignite. So I just keep the dwell safe here at like 3.5 and uh, one second, one millisecond spark duration. Um, so on those LS coils, that's the setting I use and I haven't had any problems as well as the, like the older style truck ones. Um, I forget their actual part number, but I'm running those on a couple other cars and these settings work pretty much for all the LS coils that I've used. I haven't used the LS3 ones, but uh, this seems to be pretty happy and you can find all that information online if you've got a specific question on what dwell to use. Um, and let's see, uh, cold advance. I don't really mess with this. Honestly, I don't even really drive the car when it's this freezing. Uh, once in a while I do, but basically it just adds a few degrees of advance when it's cold. That's not terribly important. Most of the time you can get the car to start, no problem. Uh, I don't use, uh, I don't have enough IO for noise filtering and, and knock sensors. And uh, let's go to the spark advance table because this is something that everyone probably wants to see. And when I made 560 wheel horsepower, I think it was somewhere around uh, 12 to 13 degrees up here at like 250 kPa. So basically, um, at 100 kPa, it's like 28 degrees advance, and then it just slowly goes down from there. And where peak torque is, um, and where boost comes on, it's a little bit softer, and then uh, builds up a little bit here. So this is a, a table that I've used on pump gas. Like this will work really well on pump gas. Um, it is also um, the same numbers that I use on flex fuel, um, and I haven't had any trouble with this. I've added, I went to the dyno and added, I think it was about two degrees um, between, uh, what is it, under my boost threshold. So from like 42 down to like 26 in here, I added like a couple degrees. So if you were really nervous about it, you could take this table, throw it in your tune as a base and just grab everything from the top down to where boost is in here. And uh, you could just, uh, take like two degrees out of it and it would be pretty safe. A, a general rule of thumb for people that are wondering is 200 kPa is your 15 PSI essentially. Um, at, uh, and right there you can go basically 15 pounds, 15 degrees. If you're just getting starting, just, you know, start at like 26, 27 degrees up at the top at 100 kPa and then go from you can go from like 27, 26 down to 15, 16 degrees at 15 pounds of boost. So anyone who's starting out, that's a pretty good, it's a pretty good taper. It's like point, I don't know, it's like 0.8 degrees removed in boost for every one pound of PSI. So every pound of boost you take out like a degree or 0.8 degrees. Um, that's a pretty good, pretty good method um, but this has been on the dyno i dyno tuned this and optimized it a little bit so if you're on e85 this is more than uh more than happy for that cylinder head these are eight to one compression engines so they they don't they're not very high compression um they're that in my experience it's not very fussy i haven't really ever heard knock even on 91 pump fuel um, but there you go yeah 16 degrees around uh, around idle you can adjust that once again I have some videos on that you can go check out but if you're trying to get it to uh, to idle a little bit stronger you can add some if you're trying to lower the idle you can take some out and it's kind of proportional you can you can pull rpm out by just taking out uh, a couple degrees here if you're trying to lower your idle but um, yeah I think for the most part that's it the warm-up enrichment and starting advance and stuff like that, I have very excruciatingly detailed videos on that um, because it's, it is kind of like something that if you don't get right, it'll have a hard time starting, but you can just pause the video and go through these if you want. I'll just open them up for you. This is just me messing around. Um, during the winter time when it's cold, it does need like a pretty big pulse. Uh, fuel to start up well in my experience, but I don't run an idle valve on this car. So uh, that's another reason why sometimes mine has um, 
some issues when it first starts up in the cold. I have to give it a little bit of throttle. And then this is also another big part of this. If you have large injectors, like, I don't know, anything over like 400 cc's, you're gonna need to adjust this throttle position based acceleration enrichment. It only needs like, you know, 0.7 milliseconds or one millisecond of uh, throttle enrichment. Otherwise you'll have too much fuel and it will actually choke out the engine, especially on smaller engines. I had this happen on an M20 that I was tuning where this was default and the default for small injectors is like four or five milliseconds. And so you'd smack the throttle and it would actually die for a second because it overloaded with fuel. Um, the initial acceleration enrichment spray was too much. So anyway, um, that's some of those settings you can look at. I've got other videos on those you can check out too. Um, but yeah, boost control settings. I just run a Mac three port boost control solenoid. There's your settings, it's like pretty standard. Um, don't forget to set your boost over, over boost protection. Um, I usually set it like five to 10 KPA, probably 10 KPA above your max boost that you wanna run. And then that way if it overruns that boost, it will just shut off the engine for 10 KPA, but you'll definitely feel it when you're making that much power. It basically just feels like you just shut off the car. Um, but it will save your engine. So make sure you set up over boost protection when you're tuning on any level of boost. Even if you're only running like seven pounds, set this up at like 10 PSI. And then uh, as you add more boost, turn this up accordingly. That'll save your engine too. Um, boost duty table, this you can mess around with. Honestly, it doesn't need to be doesn't need to look just like this. It's just wherever you you look at your boost threshold and wherever you want the boost controller to start commanding um, in that RPM range, you can change that. You could actually make an, a, a, a unique boost curve. So you can have the boost come on strong and then if you want less or if you had a boost creep, you could change these numbers out at the higher RPM levels and, and drop it down. Um, but anyway, this is this is just what I have running right now and it's basically just everything that the, the turbo can make. So. Um, it comes up, turns on, goes to this like 70% duty cycle, and then the entire time the turbo's running, it's at 70%, which on this wastegate spring is pretty much maxed out. So that's kind of those. Uh, launch control. I think everyone likes launch control. This is my launch control settings. This is uh, a fuel cut only. This one I really like. It sounds like a, like a R32 Volkswagen uh, like Audi or something like that, where it just goes into timing retard and just holds the motor back, has kind of a, a, a cool tone to it. And there's no flames that are shot when you uh, run it like this. Uh, so it's very mild. It doesn't hurt stuff as bad. And um, yeah, you can mess around with that. It's really fun. Launch control is a good time. This will bring you up on the, on the, the launch control with the, it'll spool your turbo up pretty well. I think I can make like eight pounds no problem at 3500 just running this so that's fun to check out um and i think that's it uh i don't have let's see if there's any programmable on and offs no on this car i don't have anything else um nothing on the table switching pretty much i think that's it um that's that's it that's all can bus um that's something you can turn on and off if you want to, but uh, unless you have a dash or something to read it, it won't be there. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoy this tune. This is how you make 500 wheel horsepower on a stock BMW M30. Uh, feel free to take any parts of this tune and do with it what you like. Just be aware that you cannot copy every single thing if your ignition system is different or stock. Like you have to you have to be smart about what you copy over. Like ignition table is one of the biggest things people probably want to know. And then the rest of it can be very unique to what your engine is or what your settings are. Um, just be aware of that. Like don't just copy every single setting in if you have a completely stock ignition system or something like that. Uh, Cause mine may be different than yours. But anyway, uh, if you want to see more like this, uh, please consider giving us a subscribe. Thank you.